Aloha, I'm Dr. Mike Ihara. This is another episode of Healthy Options. Tonight we have, or today, which every time you're viewing it, it's, we have a guest from Berkeley, California. Her name is Loren Moray. She is a radiation specialist slash mom. And uh, she, uh, she asked uh, me to remember her name you know, by way of saying uh, Loren is like Sophia Loren. And uh, Moray is like a Moray, Moray eel. Is that correct? Maury Eel. Yeah, okay. So we, we're actually, uh, what's on screen now is you're seeing her on Skype. Um, we're talking live to her in Berkeley, and I'm in the studio. So you see me up in the inset there. And, and Lorraine uh, has been, um, she was actually here in 2007, and um, she is a past employee of Lawrence Livermore Labs. Um, where she learned quite a bit about radiation um, and has a lot of information regarding how this affects us in the islands and how we actually have, because of the heavy rainfall, a lot of the radiation coming down on the ground on us. So and this is information that you're not getting uh, from public sources, um, but it is available out there. Anyway, I wanted to welcome Lauren. Um, thanks for joining us. opportunity to inform the Hawaiians about the environment and how it's related to their public health. Okay, I'm going to uh, share with them um, a um, screen of what you had provided. This is an uh, article that you wrote um, regarding populations exposed to uranium, and we're going to see some uh, slides from that shortly. And this next one that I have on screen is, um, well, you see it there, and maybe you can describe what's going on. This is an um, animated map of the plume of radiation coming out of Fukushima. And so on the right side, you can see where the deep red is moving. Uh, that's coming out of Japan and it comes across the North Pacific, and it's sort of hard to uh, orient yourself with this map because we're looking down on the Arctic. So but this is a polar view. Yes, this is a polar view. And so um, the top of North America uh, goes, is um, like in the middle of the map, and, it, the, um, and then it goes to Mexico and South America, uh, directly across the map and into the side of the, the vertical side of the left side of the map. Okay. And so North America is lying on its side. Okay. And the plume is directly uh, very badly contaminating Alaska and then the western part of Canada and then it's flowing uh, across the United States. It makes a turn. You can see it turning right there. Uh, but some of it continues down to Mexico where it's caught in the uh, currents that move in a gyre around the Pacific and it's taken right to directly to Hawaii. And um, the iodine, radioactive iodine levels that have been measured in Hawaii are higher than the west coast of North America and just below the J Japanese levels. So uh, Hawaii is being very seriously impacted and contaminated by this uh, nuclear disaster in Japan. And it, it has uh, uh, it's not just one reactor that is emitting huge amounts of radiation, as was the case with Chernobyl in 1986. These are much bigger reactors than Chernobyl, and there's six of them, and all of them are in meltdown and releasing large amounts of radiation, not only from the reactor, but also from uh, 600,000 spent fuel rods that are stored in seven pools on top of those reactors. Much of the water is leaked out of most of the, the, the cooling ponds, 
And um, these rods are full of extremely radioactive fission products um, because uh, the uranium, original uranium used in the fuel has fissioned into other radioactive isotopes, releasing heat, which they use to boil water and make steam in the nuclear power plant. And that turns turbines that generate electricity. And uh, this was an absolutely insane project from the beginning. And even Einstein himself, Einstein himself said, well, that's a hell of a way to boil water. <laughs> OK, now just to orient the viewers on this slide, this area um, that's uh, being uh, shown up in the upper right-hand corner here where the arrow is, um, is the date and time that this uh, is re it has recorded. So this is from the 26th of March through the 28th of March, um, and this is the universal time that's clicking by. And this time, so you see very high levels of radiation coming from Tokyo uh, over um, the Bering Strait area in Alaska, um, Canada swirling towards the East Coast, and Los Angeles and Mexico City, and then hooking around um, to the Hawaiian Islands. So this, you can barely see the big island here, and, and this is more off towards Kau, uh, Kauai. Um, so it's, it's not an insignificant, it's quite a big plume over us. Now there's a, a slide here um, that's related to the amount of um, plutonium that was measured, uh, and this was in the recent past. Is that right, um, Lorraine? 19 1974. Okay. Okay. By so, the Atomic Energy Commission, and this was in a letter in Nature Scientific Journal um, to to Nature. And, now, and se so 74 is significant because is there? Well, be because uh, this is this was a world survey done by the Atomic Energy Commission, okay. and they were measuring plutonium all over the world that had been rained out or snowed out. Okay. And um, what is so significant and very surprising is that the highest uh, level measured in the world on the ground was at Papaiko on the Big Island of Hawaii, and it's because they had 400 inches of rain a year there. And, um, and the radiation dose or the contamination level measured on the ground depends on two things, weather and geography. And Papaiko and the Big Island and also the whole chain uh, happened to be, unfortunately, in a place where high rainfall has re uh, removed the most plutonium from the atmosphere and deposited it into the environment of Hawaii. So, so we can we can compare. Uh, let's see, Burbank, California, here on the chart, where you see twenty six centimeters of annual average annual precipitation and a 0.73 measurement of plutonium, and then four hundred um, uh, centimeters. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I said inches, it's centimeters, that's uh, right. Of rain, and uh, you're having a 4.0 measure of plutonium, which, you know, is uh, five, six that's times more Burbank, California. Um, so, I mean, going back to this plume that we saw, that is, and I'll, although this is a, a measure of um, information here that came um, what, oh, 20 years ago now, it gives you an idea that rain along with the amount of radiation in the atmosphere is actually giving us a bigger dose. Is that correct, Lauren? Yes, um, we're getting a huge dose now. Okay. Uh, and and the, the problem is that radiation is cumulative. So not only do the Hawaiians have uh, it's not just plutonium, it's, all, it's more than 13 other fission products that came down with the plutonium in the rain. They just measured the plutonium. And the same thing is happening from Fukushima. It's over 1,300 radioactive isotopes 
that are coming out of Fukushima and coming down in the rain along with the radioactive iodine, cesium, xenon, and um, all the other uh, highly radioactive and very, very toxic. Ionizing radiation is an extremely pernicious and indiscriminate uh, poison. And so the Hawaiians have the bomb test material, radiation in their bodies, and if they were born then, when the U.S. and Britain did nuclear bomb tests on Christmas Island and Johnson Island, and um, that, uh, that radiation devastated the Hawaiian population. Then they had also Hiroshima and Nagasaki would have been transported to Hawaii, uh, and now we have the, uh, also the nuclear power plants from Japan, 40 years of emissions. And so now we have uh, six on fire, and um, we're at various stages of, of releasing these fission products. This is a chart that I got from the Japanese government, and uh, this is mortality between 1950 and 2004, mortality from diabetes. And you can see that there was a very large rise in diabetes after 1950 until uh, the partial test ban treaty ended Russian, U.S., and British bomb testing. But then the nuclear power plant started up in that flat saddle between the peaks and replaced the nuclear bomb testing material. Then, with the Gulf War that started in 1990, it, uranium weapons were introduced, poison gas weapons, and um, you can see a very, very large rise in mortality from diabetes in Japan between 1990 and 2000, and then they sort of backed off for a while, but um, that has uh, increased again in, in years that are not represented on that map or on that graph. Well, so, uh we, we got a little ahead, ahead of ourselves, and I, and I wanted to just basically show this because you were talking about how radiation affects diseases, and, and this, is, this past slide was a way of showing that radioactivity was affecting disease rates. Uh, and, there are, and we're talking a, a, about a lot of different diseases, um, and we'll show that in a moment. You know, we, we had, I had planned to have, uh, you had showed me a video of uh, Fukushima um, just uh, today, today. Um, yes. and so I did want to play that, and um, okay. and you can kind of describe what's going on. These are the reactors. Uh, it's not all six of them. We can see, I believe, three, um, and they've been very damaged by hydrogen explosions in them uh, between. Um, March 11th and about March, March 16th, I believe. And what we're seeing is either smoke coming out of the burning uh, fuel rods, spent fuel rods, releasing huge amounts of radiation, or that could be steam coming out of the cooling ponds where these uh, very radioactive rods are stored. But uh, I'm not really sure, I can't tell. Um, without having more information. But uh, it's a very eerie, a very frightening, and a very, very dangerous uh, accident. In fact, there's never been one as serious in the history of the world like this. And this is certainly...